Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be unboxing the Kana Kit Raspberry Pi. Now, I got requested to unbox this week from my local library. They gave me one. However, I'm not sponsored by Kana Kit. I have no affiliation with them. Um, so, I just want to start by saying that. So, in this, today in this video, we're going to be unboxing it. And we're going to set it up and see what we can do with the Raspberry Pi 4. This is a starter kit. It uh, comes with 4GB RAM and a premium black case. So we're going to see what we can do. So, here's the box here. Just fold it out, and inside we are given uh, a cable. Uh, this looks like it's an HDMI to US, just a regular USB Type B might be. Uh, we're given a fan, and this comes with my kit specifically. Um, some people aren't given this. Uh, it's not mandatory that you have it, but they give it to you just for it, in case you need it. Um, we are given here. Uh, looks like yeah, we're giving here a 32 gigabyte uh, Samsung SD card. Uh, this will be eventually loaded into the Raspberry Pi. Um, here's our power source. It comes with these metal things. I'm not quite sure these are. Um, they might be just to put on the Pi. I have to take a look. But, um, this is our power source. We are given, uh, the case for it. Uh, just like this. And then we have the actual Pi 4 in here. Uh, and then we have the, let's see, this is the power supply, it looks like, for the actual Pi. Now, if you buy regular Raspberry Pi, you won't get these things. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it says Kana Kit, unless you get the Kana Kit. I believe it's pronounced Kana Kit. It might be Kana Kit. Sorry for any mis mispronunciation. And then, well, we also have just some instructions in here. Uh, and we have one more thing. Uh, this is a card reader, just so we can use uh, putting, putting the micro USB. Alright, so now we'll quickly go over about the Raspberry Pi itself. So, what is a Raspberry Pi? A Raspberry Pi is basically just a microcomputer and it runs the Raspberry Pi software on it. So, just like a Windows computer or an Apple computer that runs their own software, uh, it runs its own software on here. Now, I'm not sure, I don't think we can preload any of their software on these things. Um, uh, but you can just, it's kind of fun to have you can program them to do different things. Uh, and I believe they use, it takes Python code, uh, but you could do other types of code as well that it takes. Now I also have an Arduino board here, uh, which is not to be confused with the confused with the Raspberry Pi. This Arduino board here uh, takes um, Arduino C for the language. So yes, it looks similar, but this is an actual computer where this is just a board that's meant to program for stuff. You can do a lot more with this Raspberry Pi, uh, as we'll see further on. Now one thing that you'll need to know is that you'll need to have an external monitor to use this because you have to plug the HDMI into it. If you do not have an external monitor, you won't be able to use this, unfortunately. So just make sure you have that before you get started. Alright, so let's go into the setup and see how we can use this. Alright, so sorry about that guys, my camera died. But what I have done here is I have gotten the whole Raspberry Pi set up in the case and everything. But I'm going to explain what I did so you guys will understand how to set it up. So the first thing I did is I just took the Pi, put it in the case by taking the bottom part and the top part off, and slid it in there. And the next thing that I did is I connected um, the USB which just connects, so it's a US, it goes, it's an HDMI to a USB cable, connected that into the side port here. It will be labeled on the Pi and on the case. And next, I connected the USB Type-C, uh, which connects to this power adapter here. It's a 12-volt power adapter, and that just connected to that, plugs right into a wall outlet. And the next thing I did, it's really important for anyone who's getting this, is I loaded this SD card in here that comes preloaded with noobs which is basically just the entry guide for setting up the Raspberry Pi for people who have not used Raspberry Pi yet. So if you don't have this SD card, you'll have to get your own SD card. This is a 32 gigabyte one, and there's some instructions on the Raspberry Pi website. I'll link it down in the description below on how to preload the noob software on here. This way, when you start up the Raspberry Pi, it'll be a lot easier to use, and you won't be hit with all these crazy terms that you might not understand. Alright, so that's pretty much just the basic setup. Not too hard. Everything was really simple and easy. I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to hook it up to my monitor, and we're going to see what we can do with it. Alright, so I just got the Pi booted up uh, just by turning it on, and I'm plugged. everything's plugged in correctly. One thing to make sure is that you have this HDMI cable right next to the USB-C port, not too down. Otherwise, you'll have plenty of issue with it getting to turn on. So what I'm going to do here... Uh, is now that we've gotten past like the little rainbow screen, I'm going to check the operating system that I want, and I'm going to click install. Once that's done, uh, we'll have a, every, we'll be ready to go. All right, as you can see, it's downloading. This might take a bit of time, depending on how quickly how quick your internet is. So we're just going to come back and 
maybe five to ten minutes and see how much progress we made. All right, guys. So it's successfully installed here. I'm just gonna click OK. It's going to just quickly reboot, I believe, and then it's going to bring us into the main menu. And actually, well, it's already booted up right now. So welcome to your Raspberry Pi um, desktop. If you're using a couple things for the setup, so I'll quickly do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead just fill in a couple some personal data, and then we'll come back. Alrighty, so now we are in the Raspberry Pi, um, completely all set up and everything, so we can use it. So, a couple cool things is that it uses Chromium, so not actual Chromium, it uses Chromium, which is kind of a more watered down version of Chromium, I guess you could say. Um, it's a bit more bare bones, but it's just like Chromium, you have your tabs here, you can sign into Gmail over here on the right. Um, <clears throat> you also have your terminal here, so you can do commands, so for example, let me just expand this, you can do the tree command. Oops, I didn't put too many e tree command. You can do the directory command. Just, let me try that again. Oh okay, yeah, yes, so there's not, there's not obviously not a lot in the directory right now. The tree command is just that. Now, once you're adding files here, this is going to get a lot bigger. Uh, you can even do the driver query, I believe, this one about. Let's try that. Uh, query might might not take the might not take those commands, but on the Pi. But that's basically what you can do with it. Um, like I said, it's just like a regular computer, but you do have, you can do, a, you have BlueJ for the Java IDE. So a lot of just cool stuff on here that you can do. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please comment down below if you have any other questions or comments. I can make a part two or a sequel or something. But yeah, that's pretty much all. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.